Fanatics turn to ban. Dire team <laughs> ban. Fanatics turn to <laughs> ban. Dire team ban. All right, guys. Hello and welcome to the Boston Maple Southeast Asian qualifiers and down to halfway throughout the day. Maybe less than that, as we have about four games left to go. Um, for people that are wondering, where is Cyclops? He is taking a break for the rest of the day, as he is assigned to cast half of our bracket, and I'm assigned to cast of the half. So he's going to rest up. He's going to come back tomorrow fresh as ever. But for now, we're going to be going into this series. The best of our RQ versus Fnatic. They are drafting really, really before we go into the draft, let's take a look at the standings of the so far. So looking at the standings, it looks like our RQ fortunately have lost all of their games today. They have played two games coming up in time. So Fnatic, I believe, they have played they have played three games and they have won all of those games. So Fnatic have beaten Signa to Trust, the Mongols and Reserved. Whereas our RQ they have just finished playing up against Flada. Fire Dragoon Warriors Game Fnatic. Unity. So RQ not going to be happy as they are very strong in the standings. They may still turn it around tomorrow, but the odds of their bracket or the entire Southeast Asia bracket, it's really not looking too so aside from that, remaining. currently being picked and banned. So Batrider as well as Warlock being banned out by RRQ. Whereas for Fnatic, they get rid of the Nyx Assassin Master. and the Ogre Magi. Dying and RRQ, they ban out the Warlock and the Batrider just because Fnatic, they, they loved running far. Fnatic have been picking up Warlock and well as Batrider. It's been working out for them so well. The, the statistics on this Warlock, I believe, are insane. I was looking at Fnatic's stats with this and Five take a look remaining. at this guys so fanatic they currently have a 57 win percentage percent win percentage for that warlock their bat rider win is 75 so this makes our rq is getting rid of these heroes because fanatic these are covered heroes seconds. they're ready to do thing with this warlock and bat rider selection Five fortunately remaining. not gonna see it and I think get rid of the Nyx as well as Ogamai. Ogamai is very, very popular support. Great rumor, whereas for Nyx, I'm actually a bit surprised about this Nyx ban. I guess our uh, RQ thing. Um, Fnatic, they do run the Nyx themselves, but that doesn't really seem to be for them because they banned it out. Now, for our RQ, they're going to be opening up with Juggernaut as well as Slada picks. And Slada is also another hero that Fnatic likes to run, so unfortunately that is not going to be available for them. Instead, grabbing up the Beastmaster for Ohio, so it's still going to be a comp pick here for Ohio in this op. Not really the well that he can't play the Slada, which for our RQ, you can tell they're looking for want to have the, ju the Juggernaut working with the Slada with the fire damage, so... Boost his attack and possibly look to roam a little bit earlier than you. Uh, Bonus when you have a slaughter with any heroes that typically do a lot of physical damage. If you're running in the slaughter, that means that you're not going to be able to fight actively with the team. Pushes because of the healing ward. And it just makes them a bigger threat than they normally would. And also, it's not just the jug. If they pick something that's like a puck in the middle lane. Puck who doesn't necessarily hit the hardest able to get the extra boost coming out from the slaughter mine. So you can tell our RQ that we've got something in the bag it's waiting to pull it out for Fnatic. There's, take a look at our Malaysian squad, Beastmaster and Dissenter. They have a the glimpse, you've got the long range master raw, you've got the hawk for vision. You, I can already tell that Fnatic, they want to control this game vision and Fanatics, this raw pick. is going to be so great for down the jug as well, just because they're relying on the spin to just go through escape. Possible if Ohio is some jungle, whereas with the disruptor pickup, the silence is Ten able to land that remaining. silence onto the oracle who throwing it on top of the ladder. It renders remaining. those two here useless. Same with the jug, assuming he has spun before the static storm gets thrown out. So it just looks like Fnatic, they really want to go heavy into that sort of roam and vision to 
catch RRQ off guard as much as possible. Whereas for RRQ, they want to fight. They've got the Oracle who don't have access to the False Promise, meaning that they're going to be able to fight for longer, harder, because harder, to have scalability with the Juggernaut pick. Eventual Spirit going to be the second support pickup here for Fnatic, so already you can tell that Fnatic, they want to have that backup insurance in case really someone gets trouble. And there may be a hint here that Drow Ranger could be up. This hero has been very, very popular. She hasn't been banned yet, might still be Bounty early, Hunter. but she could be something that Fnatic could Fnatic be looking to, just because Ventral Spirit and Drow, two heroes that work Drow very Ranger. well, and there we go, Drow Ranger pick up for Fnatic. Dirty I was also going to... Disruptor is also a great hero to send back any from RRQ that could be looking onto jumping on top of Drow. Because Drow, her biggest weakness, having anyone has some sort of way to get to her. So things such as Slarks, Bardas, any sort of initiation on top of the Drow, that's when the Disruptor... And also, I think something also we, we forgot to mention was that you're looking at a lot of auras coming out from Fnatic now. Beastmaster aura, you've got the Ventral Spirit aura, and now you have the Drow Ranger that's going to be giving that passive ranged attack to just the Venge, but after and possibly the. So you can tell that Fnatic should be hitting incredibly hard early on. You've got decent lanes. Master, who's going to be sufficient on his own, and okay, so it looks like for Fnatic, they're going to go back for this Medusa pick. I guess I forgot to mention Mushi in the drafting seat. Mushi himself, he loves to run this Medusa. Why do they play the Medusa is actually fight with Stone Gaze, run at the enemy with the Stone Gaze. Fnatic, they've got the chase, they're going to be able to punish our RQ phase where they're going to try to run, so that's why. The roars, the stuns, the reserve time. So handy for Fnatic to chase down RRQ. And looking at the end of the squad, they don't really have the best heroes during the Stone Gaze. But after the Stone Gaze, they have a lot of possibilities to punish Fnatic because their draft is rather squishy. Once that, that initial Fnatic has been thrown out, I'm pretty sure that's going to be it for Fnatic, and they'll be the ones on the run instead of RRQ. For an Indonesian squad, I'm we expect a lot from him to sort of open these lanes up for the Slada to help him bid for RRQ to at least put some pressure on this Medusa. He's most probably going to be going mid here for Fnatic, unless they put the Drow Ranger mid. I will assume it's going to be also mid just because she that plays that. And the last pick for RRQ, it's going to so they are going to be providing empower to the chart. They will also have access to RP as well, which is a great spell. Getting those here together for the follow-up, which is coming out from our Slada with the Rush, the Juggernauts. Lots of team fight here for RRQ, but the, the disengage could be something a little bit wrong. But again, it's fanatic going to be a bit of a squishy draft for RRQ punch they can still be punished if they're caught off guard so guys we are gonna best of one between rrq asian qualifiers fanatic they have won three of the far whereas for rrq they have lost two five seconds much all remaining. of their games so far and i'm gonna be completely honest they are definitely not the favorite But, oh dear. Oh, that's, I'm not disconnected. Oh. Server. <laughs> what a start to the But, uh, for guys that are just tuned in, welcome. My name is Dana Lee. I'll be your solely English caster for this. Uh, the next game after this, I'll be joined by three player from Fnatic, who is going to be trying his hand at casting. So if you want to stick around to see 343 try his hand at casting, my guest and also provide some feedback for him as well because he does want to be faster and any sort of feedback it will help him as well as myself out as well. Let's take a look at what's well as uh, looks like you thinking there was a bounty hunter nearby gonna not, not gonna be popping it onto the right target but Zephyr will be going up through the river now fortunately they don't have any detection left 
has already actually no, he's got a sword on him. But uh, they don't really have the best heroes of chase. Well. Thirty seconds to battle. So it looks like the bounty hunter is going to be able to get out scot free. Do a quick team intro as well on Dire Squad coming in from Indonesia. We have Rex Kui was a Regum Eon, I believe that you pronounce it. And uh, let's start with Kowalamon, who's got who has the iron going into the off lane, but is running uh, at least the the mid block here. Plus, it's the Magnus off. Doesn't really seem to be the case. Yabby is in a position to at least pick up items to be running in that mid. So we have Kowalamon, aka Koala, going into the top lane. We have Kelthazard on our Juggernaut. Also have Varish, who's going to be supporting him on the Oracle, alongside Zephyr, the roaming bounty hunter. And uh, we also, we already did Koalamon, so I believe. No, we got everyone. That's going to be Rex Ragoom. On, on the side of Fnatic, we have Ohio on the off lane at Master. In the middle lane, we have Mushi. And bottom lane, we have Demon on our Disruptor, Raven on our Drow Ranger, and finally, we have be our roaming ventral spirit it seems up top ohio looks like he was in a bit of trouble but they unfortunately cancel that tp so he's going to be able to walk home free for now well we need to be but ohio he's rather good in this he has access to this observer ward that's providing him a lot of vision here but he also is going to have the boar which is able to provide a slow and beastmaster's being naturally the easiest hero to kill off uh, Varish will be putting down some sentries. One ward gets taken down, the other sentry will yeah, will be able to spot them out the moment someone gets into range, and Zeph is going to be able to spot that out for his teammate at least. So looking in the middle lane, Yabby going up against... So it looks like Mushi is a little bit low, he has opt to take one mana shield, so he is looking to pressure Yabby out with the snake. A lot of people underestimate just because, especially against heroes that have low mana pools, that re mana pools, assuming that the snake comes out towards one of the last hit. So if you have you, not have the best. Also, range matchup. So Mushi is going to get free harassment off, knowing that Yabby is not really going to be able to touch him. Looks like this bottom oh, is going to be abandoned. Blada, go just to go back to the fountain quicker. But uh, yeah, bottom looks like it's going to be a man's going to the bounce is going to be soaking up XP here. So that is going to guarantee him levels, but looks like the courier may be in trouble as there's a haste to eat. He's looking to grab it. He backed up with his courier. does finally go down, but Kowalamon is here. Gabby, you uh, you just going to dance. Very happy with that grab, and they're going to be looking for a Zephyr. Could be in a lot of trouble. There should be detection here on the bench, just a sentry ward, but that ward may just take out this little bounty hunter. A little bit surprised that they're not roaming with Zep, but this is guaranteeing easy levels, and it looks like he will spot out EU as he puts a observer ward on the top lane. But at least EU's gonna try and run away, but look at Zephyr, he's got the orb of venom, so it is slowing down EU, doing some decent damage, but he will be sent back as there is a glimpse, he just puts two points in glimpse, and they might just really throw him EU goes. My fleet striders tracks First, run the red. Even amazing play, holding onto the two points. Just happens and he puts them both into great coordination coming up from Fnatic to secure that first one. Looks like we're gonna have a bottle refill here from our Magnus as the uh, Zephyr TP's. Just gonna help you yeah, a little bit as uh, consider this yes. Not really. Yeah, but you are there. We go. There's the snake. Already down to one third of his hate. Not gonna be an easy one as that Magnus. And as I said, this difference quite big. The over yeah, you in terms of CF. This is a Musa. So our RQ, they make sacrifices. They know the Magnus is not going to win lane unless he has help. So they're saying we're gonna we're willing to sacrifice those levels, but we all when he hits that, when he gets that blink, fortunately that blink is not going to come online anytime. 
So let's take a look at the situation here with Ohio. Just quietly sitting in the jungle and looks like our poor, poor bouncy been spotted again and deep tier glimpses up already and they might not even have to be slowed down by the ball. They're gonna give the kill to the supports and that's that demon. A nice little chunk of gold on top of the second kill of the game and what's effort? He's had a pretty hard time on that. Just no matter where he goes, always detected, there's always glimpses that are really, really tough. That even gets deboarded too. Bottom lane being heavily pushed with the help of Ohio. They've TP'd in Zephyr, but Zephyr's. There's no way in hell am I going into that mess. So this tower's gonna be going away, unfortunately. Take a look at our RQ. They're gonna try and make a trade. They send Kelpazar as well as Barish down into that bottom, uh, into the top lane. Not really gonna be. Uh, they do TP Ohio up top, top tower by himself, but Koala Mon's here. Koala can be helping this top lane out. That looks like it might just be going down for and more. They have advantage coming up for the TP to come on through from Fnatic. They will contest this. They've got a lot of free heroes. They are pretty much ready to go. So here comes another TP. This is going to be um, Rushi this time. They're on onto the bench, but EU. Done, but the night time, unable to get into range. They burst and RRT, they leave with no, no casualties, but they were looking. Zephyr, still roaming around trying to find out where everyone is, and Demon actually gets the successful. Fortunately, they don't really have out onto the bounty hunt. So, I think at this point, Zephyr's just gonna soak up this EXP from Ra Free EXP, roam around, see what he can do. Maybe he can go into the mid lane. He has two wards on him, but how about putting him down? He will put one down, so it provides his team a little bit of vision. So a pause comes on through an attic, so. Looks like we have a couple of maybe problems. Toilet break. Players haven't played. Pretty expected as the day progresses. Teams need a bit of a break or a drink, or maybe if you're staying at home by of us are in the fanatic houses, just we all would like to. So, and, and looking at CS so far, you've got our Drow Ranger happy as can be as a clam. One CS with the Juggernaut closing in, guys, with 48. Here's CS, but so has Drow. RQ, they're gonna have to address these issues. You're having a Drow and a she's gonna get damage based on how well the drow is doing. The drow is doing him. He's gonna be doing amazing because it's getting already 20 this early on. That's gonna be a problem as the game goes later and later. Let's take a look at net worth. We've got still our drow and juggernaut at the top. Magnus is closing in on fourth place with Mushi in third. So Yabby is trying to close in for a blink tag as soon as possible, but I'm a little bit. That the fact of the matter here, both Yabby as well as Koala want to act as temper control. They're not really in the position to get, they're not really in a position to apply pressure this early. And I'm a bit worried for them here. But I think you can going on to Ohio, but that mana for the Omni is out for the most part. Koala farming in the jungle, but Demon's here and he has level 3 glimpse and the range on this is absolute third. Koala's like, I know I'm gonna be in trouble, but here comes Zephyr as well. They will go for the uh, block here onto Koala, but Raven's in trouble. Minus armor, it looks like Smith finished the job here as that goes for a beautiful turn from RRQ. A TP in from Zephyr to help out Koala, definitely working in their favor. And that's gonna be one punishment for getting a little bit over themselves, not really sure where the bounce to. So Zephyr's gonna be chasing demon down as well. Getting very close to that level 6 on the bounty, this is a point in time for Zephyr. The earlier you get access to the track, the earlier your team's gonna get bonus golden. They roughly know where Zephyr is, but you might have other plans if you attack Koala. Koala's looking rather weak up as disrupt again. Why is that? I just caught the glimpse of that, but here comes Ohio. Did it end? No mana gets down. It's the nature of the beast. So it's very nice that the bounty got that kill, as he was able to get level six with it. But dying afterwards, and 
Fire, a little bit scary. Did have an Observer Ward out, but really enough to save his life. He was just saying, I want this level 6, I'm gonna, cri I'm gonna grab it. Probably gonna die with it as well. Graphs really to sort of see in what position everyone's in. Our RQ, they're currently leading at EXP, which is really them closing in towards a 3k EXP lead. This is still quite... How do I say this? I don't want to say tiltable because that's not all good, but this is definitely manageable for Fnatic. I turn this around. Whereas net worth, there was a lead, but I don't know, only 1k. This also is quite manageable for our RQ. They're going to be able to turn this around off the back of one team. Right. Gold status for both sides. We have both Link Dagger carriers for our RQ still working on the big, big eye. Assuming that they don't die any sooner, can get that guaranteed free farm. Probably expecting roughly 14 to 15 daggers on both of these guys. Magnus will be the first one to grab it, I presume, just because he has access to that and power. So it looks like a bit of a group up here from Fnatic. Both the supports as well as Ohio, they're ready to look still and Raw is always going to be off cooldown. Bell has insanely short cooldown, and I may have just juiced it. Yeah, I'd be used it. Here, they've got the support. They're back in one. Have to throw the static storm out to send them all back. Everyone on our field is. Who's she going to be coming in the spray? You have the strength. What? But they knocked it. Yeah, you. He gets the stun off before he gets the skew up, but Thor's promise is there. Come on. Casey wants to reach. Oh, mana. The snip comes back. It will regen with mana again, but here comes Raven. Fnatic gonna be whole ton of damage. Like I said, there's the chase. The glimpse gonna be throwing them a third kill. RRQ still poised and ready to go, but because they lost their main leader in that fight, they won't do anything. So being Magnus, the first drop, they're gonna be losing off of this as well. And look at the range damage coming out from everyone on the side of Fnatic. But Oh god, that's a crazy amount. Even if Mushi has a sizable amount of damage because of the precision. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. So the dilemma that our RQ is currently facing. Fight versus Fnatic, and Fnatic manages to maintain the majority of their draft, including the Drow. Towers are going... That is the dilemma here of our RQ. Our RQ is currently in a position... They need to win these fights, and they need to secure objectives off of them. Because you take a look at the situation so far. They won one. Fnatic has taken, taken bottom T1. They take it bottom T2. Mid T1. And this is just off the fact that pushing on Fnatic is just so, so good because of this bonus damage coming out from... Now, like I said, if the Venger's nearby, you've also got the Vengeful Aura. 6% damage. 36%. So for RRQ, they they got to get their act together. Thing is, as we're seeing in the current gold, would have had to struggle a little bit earlier if he didn't die, but we're getting it very soon. So 13 minutes has been committed to farming, which is very good for him. Have to make something work. They let this game go as is. They're going to have a very, very tough time coming back. And it looks like we missed a kill. It was on the ventral spirit. Health is our committed. Down. Ask a madness onto him, so use a support, just duck it not, but unfortunately that is a support kill. Grabbing a support kill that not really gonna be progressed through the game that much easily. Blink dagger finally secured on the Magnus and I'm expecting RRQ to smoke up with Ag and if they don't smoke with Yabby, you just the one to solo smoke the setup for his team. So after him, we're going to have to be looking for the Slardar to grab his blink. While once practically almost got his as well. It's like he wants to make sure that he gets this without dying. These two blink taggers online. This is a power spike for RRQ. They need to abuse the fact that they have access to all of this mobility and control. They need to kill Fnatic while they are rather vulnerable and manageable. Unfortunately, it might not be that easy. As got a three-man smoke cube, Raven Demon and there is dust on both Ohio and Demon. Bounty on that way. Could be in a little bit of trouble, but that's gonna be the case. They are gonna be fanatic, slowly chewing on to RRQ. 
have no idea that this is happening. They're roaming around with Yab lane. They can't quite find anything. Roshan's actually chewing into the fanatic because that one outside of Ohio that can tank that Rosh, but it doesn't really matter. They do have Ohio's book. That's going to be sweaty working on that. He just gets packed up here by Fnatic. Big, big power spike here for Fnatic. So we now have access to item in the as well, as well as the extra gold from Roshan as well. So you hiding in the tree lines may have been spotted out by Zephyr and if out soon. Oh, RQ, they really want to look for someone. They're using they actually using some of their heroes as bait to try and get Yabu to get on them afterwards. They've had their blinks for a while, but nothing's really happening from RRQ. I'm a little bit concerned here. The blink dagger's up. You're running two heroes that are very reliant and nothing's really happening. I suppose the other thing is that they're worried about this agent. They're not taking a lot of damage. False Prophets gets nasty. Oracles will surprise themselves with the glimpse. Oh! Push back the disruptor and oh, looks like it's gonna be Kalthazard out safe for now. And Yappy just gets caught on the end there. And I think this might be Demon's Revenge as Yappy trying to run into his own base. He will be killing ward from that jug. How far forward Fnatic has pushed up. Bouncy Hunter in the back lines goes track here on T. For the support side and the cross on two. And go for the swap and no. Oh, that's gonna be um, our RQ. Desperate and because as it stands, their tower is dropping at a incredible rate. Double damage onto Mushi. Hundred damage. It's like a divine rapier. Raven goes in the gas in and skew it in. But Aegis. Let Mushi have to go for a bit of a retreat as he had to. Pop Trying to find something with Zephyr, but he's not able to find anyone. Kelsazar losing for any instant. Get a by Demon and Raven. Oh, uh, they are dying base, but now it's going to be Fnatic on the retreat as they weren't able to get their main objective. They will lose the process, I believe. He has a glimpse available. He may live. Wells, unfortunately. <laughs> Advantage here for RRQ, but they lost the teeth. They are very lucky they did not lose it. They ain't there this early on. They lost those Raxes. That will already be a heavy burden for the Juggernaut to carry. Yes, you're gonna have more, but it means that our RQ is gonna be confined to that bottom for the majority of the game. So someone's gonna be able to effectively clear that. And uh, the Jug, don't really want to be down that bottom lane to fire up because you from Fnatic. They spot that Jug, not them, they will be looking for the moment they can spot him out. Take a look at the net worth really before we take a look at far EXP. Interestingly enough, still in favor of RRQ, but this is still very, very close to the halfway mark. Teams are looking relatively even. Whereas for net worth, slight advantage 5k. It's slight because one team fight from RRQ will be able to turn the tides of this advantage. Panic still shouldn't be looking to get. They need to maintain their composure if they're going to be able to take this game in a relatively good fashion. And, uh, looks like someone might be dying in relatively good fashion. Careful, but Abby, you got the picture and uh, they're safe. Uh, if you're going to just abandon this middle lane, there, there's really no point defending. Thru is just not in the best position to defend. Mushi teeping down bottom as everyone's on the retreat here. For RRQ, they tried to go for a T1 snag, but the tower's just so darn healthy. And they really don't have anyone outside of the jug and possibly the Magnus to push those towers down. Here is the item. Ready E is looking to grabbing that mechanism practically completed. Drow, Raven is so, so good on this drought. So farm, Dragon Lamb, Gasha, 1.2k gold on top of that as well. And Ohio is looking to grab that Necro Book 3. Hey, right now? Recipe? Oh god, this. That is the ne Necro 3. The game. I don't see anyone outside of Kel'Thuzad on the job. Oh, this fish. It would have to be spinning. Oh god, that would just do so, so much damage. So RRQ, gonna try and do the safest thing. 
now, I don't know Juggernaut. Hope someone takes the bait, but Fnatic, they're not really interested in that Doug. They're saying, you can take that T1. We're gonna take the T2 instead. This T2, not gonna be really long for this world unless there's some sort of defense here from RRQ, but the Indonesian squad, it's time to at least their pace, Fnatic. I'm sending a couple of heroes back, Vash. Well, it's running a scan down. She is scanning me out from Fnatic to see if anyone. Luckily for them, it's going to be all clear. They make health as well down. Last of our RQ is down here. They're going to send Nushi back and all. Getting some support. Looks like they had the clue. They had the clue. They cancelled the TP. That actually sends our RQ back. Whereas a Fnatic, they're all still up in the top lane. They have two teams up here. They've sent in both Kowalamon as well as Zephyr. But Fnatic, they've already backed themselves. So Fnatic, they did the damage. Down to one third left. And uh, considering what's going on with the time off, we've got two minutes to refigure out the definitive time for Roche. I wonder if it's going to be one of the earlier Roches or if it's going to be a later one. The earlier it is, the better it is for Fnatic. But the later it be... Bit of a problem because take a look at what Kelpazard has. He is starting to mount quite a bit of an inventory. His net worth, he is over Mushi in terms of. Kelpazard has been considered farming non stop this game. Attack. Power farm and power farm and power farm. Top tower has fallen. This is just the product of him not really helping out the team. It is helping out his net worth. The main concern though is can Kelpazard carry his team? He is still going to need help from his team to targets down, but he, that's going to be dishing out the most damage. He has to really synchronize with Sada as well. The Amplify damages need to be crush stuns, the RPs. If everything goes to plan. And I believe Kel'Thuzad is in a good spot to possibly solve it. The problem now is that Raven has got his Hurricane Pike, which is arguably items on the Tower Ranger fight people. And that's the biggest weakness of any melee hero. Fighting. It's just, it's gonna be such a big problem. RRQ themselves, they had Disruptor, then the Hurricane Pike wouldn't be. Because they don't have the best chase. It makes this job a little bit more difficult for that jug. Unless they can somehow off in a couple of swipes, but I'm not too sure if that's possible. I guess it would be. It has a. I don't wanna say low HP pull, this is quite high considering. Radiant structure. Now, but she can still possibly get killed because of the minus armor and the damage coming. The power juggernaut. T1 gets taken down. RRQ, they're banking on the fact that their health desire can act as a bait. And it's kind of liking because Fnatic, they don't really want to RRQ head on. Fnatic, they do have some great disengage, but they want to be the ones to jump onto RRQ. Other way around. So the Malaysian squad, they, they played very smart up until RRQ. They've actually been coming up with some really smart plans themselves. And it's forced Fnatic into the... They are still predominantly farming. This is a bad thing. This is... I'm afraid this might just be the best bet here for RRQ. If Kel'Thuzad himself is unable to carry the game for his team, be over. Because they are running a single core lineup up against... Stupidly strong cores on the side of Fnatic. Now and Medusa. Energizing very well with each other. Radiant Looks like high ground's gonna be attacked attack. by Fnatic. They've got everything. Oh, did they back up? They've got one more down. Maybe they're hoping someone goes onto the low ground so far. Looks like it's just gonna be them. Just pushing a little bit, fainting the forcing RRQ back and then going back to farming. They may not have seen the smoke here, so Koala, he's looked for blood, and here Root drowns, going for the bad damage, and Kel'Thuzad's looking for him, forced to that forward, on this back. Completely melted, and unfortunately, no version for another minute. This opportunity here for Aki, they're giving something else, so you use here with Demon and Ohio, but four of them, or three of them to say the least, they'd be sending you to say, take me instead! Sacrifice for the to the RRQ gods. Okay, they may have been able to get a little bit more if they decided 
to raise to chase, but I think at that point they were saying, we'll, we'll, take, a, we'll take a dual spirit for good. That's a good deal for me. Got the item progression again, 24 minutes in, so we've got the Lincoln Spear on to Mushi. He is going to be okay for a couple of these spells, not going to be an easy flash target. He's happy to have popped by some RRQ. About RRQ, they have a couple of spells they don't mind wasting, but none with long range, so that it's safe to camp. An amplified deck. Mech completed on EU, you've got the Hurricane Pike, you also have the Necronomicon 3 finished up onto Ohio. Bissell, interestingly enough, is done on Kalthazard. His first major item outside of that style. So it looks like a lot of RIQ solution to chase. Using this, uh, using the Abyssal Blade, lock down the target that way. Might just have to RIQ. They have sufficient lockdown. Obviously, more will not hurt. And also, it's going to tank up our Juggernaut as well. Help him out. But he may be in trouble though, assuming that Fanatic doesn't try to go for him. Sending the Hawk to the Roche Pit. Uh, do they have the Necronomicon units? They have managed one odds, I believe. And they're going to be going for a wraparound, or is this a Roche? It looks like it's going to be a wrap here. All of Fnatic going in for a back to RRQ. Now the Mounty he the smokes here if he's lucky. Oh, he's running towards the west, and they go for a stop. They get the out. It's going to be okay. And they have been revealed. Necronomicon. Oh, and now Fnatic, they're going for a chase here onto RRQ. They will cancel out the blink here on Tukawala, losing mana, and Kalthazad looking to kill off this Necronomicon unit, taking damage. 200 gold, they will back off, but Slim is back. Well, I've got stunned up as well. Higher. And here is that 4,000 crystals. And Abby gets down as well. Oh boy. Just safe. So comes in with that level 4 glimpse. This just opens up a free Roche for Fnatic. This whole game RRQ themselves, they were the ones looking to open up a fight onto Fnatic. That played, that jumped and fortunately just disrespecting the fact that there is a disruptor on the field. Especially with the Hawk on the map as well. Don't expect to be able to fight away. Or at least Duke. Any sort of vision, and whoever you're looking for is practically dead. I think the biggest mistake there was the Jug looking to go for the kill onto Con unit and committing the spin. Could have actually backed up a little bit, but stuck around, wanted to kill that off, and unfortunately getting punished because he has no magic left. So Raxus taken down, 26 game. Butterfly completed onto Mushi as well as Amantha style finished up onto Raven. Carries look really really big right now. Seven damage for the whole team as well coming up. As Vengeful Spirit is hitting all practically 200 pop. This is armor reduction from the targets but he used well and Vengeful uh, Looking onto Demon not as good but better than the would have gotten it. Just demon. Fnatic got control of the map so far, whereas uh, uh, they're flying to their base and really can't blame them. The moment they stick their head out, if demon is anywhere nearby, just quick whip of his wand, glimpse back into. All of a sudden, you're going to be taken down by a roar. RRQ, they really don't have that many options available because they have a graph that's predominantly built in a team fight. You for a Bagdus, you went for a Slada. Two heroes that sell a team fight, they do to a certain degree excel with pickoffs, but with the position coming out from Fnatic, they really are not going together. Because Fnatic know that if they move together as a team, they are not easy to pick off. So here we go. Graph before the fight start. Huge net worth advantage, the crush comes down, swap the ball, and oh, koala. Use the swap aggressively. Losing one initiative fight off the bat, this just does not make the job easier here for RRQ. RP2 available, in to one, they're gonna be on to new ship with the player. Such a fire as well, onto the GG 
Luigi calls RRQ fanatic. RRQ. Best one series. Fanatic there in the It's for RRQ, unfortunately. So Clint. They have lost three games in a row today. No victories for RRQ, but Fanatic.